Now let's talk about API routes. We can use API endpoints to build either a RESTful API or a GraphQL API. With Next.js API routes, there is no longer a need to set up a backend Node.js server to build an API. Building out two separate projects for a front-end and back-end introduce its own set of challenges. Next.js simplifies this process by becoming a full-stack web framework with addition of API routes. API routes go in the pages inside this API folder. Creating pages inside this API folder will generate API endpoints. Just for the example, let's suppose that you have user file inside this API. So for example, if I create here a file called users.js, then this is going to represent the API endpoint users. So if you want to access your users, you have to head on to the localhost 3000 API and the name of your file, which is users. When you head on to this location, you will get your data. So right now you're not going to get anything because inside this file, I don't have anything here. Now you can notice with Next.js, you will get a default file called hello.js. Let me open that. Here you can notice you have here one endpoint, which is hello.js. And this is going to export a default function called handler. And inside this handler, we have two parameters, request and response. As you know, when we make a request, we need to add two parameters, request and response. And as a response, we are going to return a status code 200, which is the successful status. And then we return a JSON data with it. Let me show you how you can call this request. If I open my project, then I can head on to localhost 3000 API forward slash hello. When I press enter, you can see I'm going to get a response from the API endpoint hello. This file of this API directory represent the endpoint hello. And from this endpoint, we are returning this data. We are doing the same thing with this users file. Inside this users file, let me create here a function. I'm going to just export a default function and name this function get users. And we pass here request and response parameter. Don't forget to pass request and response parameter. Otherwise, this function will not work. And then I'm going to say here response dot status. Status is going to be 200 which is successful status. And then I'm going to return a JSON data. Inside the JSON, I'm going to return an array of object. So we pass here an array. And inside this array, I'm going to pass here two objects, something like this. So now we have an array of object inside this JSON. So when we call this user endpoint, I'm going to get this response. So let me save these changes back to my project. And instead of hello, I'm going to say here users. When I press enter, you can see, I'm going to get my response in the browser. Now let me show you how you can fetch this data in the component. So let's suppose that you have here file called user.js and inside this you export a default function called users. Now this is a type of component, right? And inside this we return a simple JSX. So we pass here article and inside this I'm going to iterate over the users and print all the users one by one inside this article. Now to get the users, we need to pass here a parameter. So here we pass object and pass here users. And then inside this article, we are simply going to pass here curly braces and then say here users dot map. I'm going to iterate over this area of object using a map function. And then I'm going to say here u for users and inside this parenthesis, I'm going to say div and then specify h1 heading tag u dot name. Now, because we have name inside this data, we pass here name. Now, just out of that, as you know, this is the static generation. And you have to pass data to the static generation using get static props. So, just down here, you pass this data to this component using a function. So, we pass here export async. Make sure the function is async function. So, we pass here async function get static props and then inside this i'm going to make a request to the api so we say here constant response is equal to and then i'm going to call here fetch javascript function now this function is used to make a request to the api now the first parameter is going to be the url the endpoint of the data as you know if you open the browser this is your endpoint 
of this data. Let me copy this and then we pass that endpoint here like this. Just out of that, we need to convert this data into JSON format. So we pass here constant users is equal to response.json. And now because this is the async function, we can pass here await. So everything works asynchronously, something like this. And just out of that, once we get this data, we can just return it. We can return that data using return statement. So we return props to these props, we pass users. Now make sure you pass this same variable to these props because we're destructuring this user inside this component. Something like this. So this is how you can get the data from the API. So we just created a simple API endpoint using this API route and then use that inside this users component. Back to my project and now let me open this. Here I'm going to type post and then specify the component name which is user. Now when I press enter, you can see I'm going to have my data as a response. So I'm going to get here two values as a response from this page. Using this technique, you can create different endpoints inside this API folder and fetch that data and specify that to the page. Later in this course, we will talk more about these API routes and understand how we can use API routes in the Next.js project.